Well, glory to God. How many of y'all are glad to start the year in the house of the, God, of the Lord? Amen. Well, stand and give Jesus a big hand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Say it with me. Say, Lord, you are still good, and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Lord, lead us in prayer and start this service. Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this new year that you have given us, Lord. And I ask that you just take this church to new heights this year, Lord. You just allow your presence to be felt in this place, Lord, and help us to minister to many more souls, Lord. I ask that you just guide and direct this service today, Lord. You have your way and let your spirit fall in this place. Yes, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I want you to uh, uh, find a couple of people, greet them this morning, and tell them thank you for not being a fair-weather Christian. Hallelujah. Lord, God, thank you for coming on in the cold this morning. We're going to worship the Lord this morning.
take of the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Anybody glad about that? Turn it for Sing it this morning. Good. should be what we do every day. Uh, it's called My Jesus. And, you know, we, we have a God that's great, and we love Him, and He's good to us, but He wasn't just put here for us. He's put here for others. And that's what we're put here for, is to reach others. And so this song just portrays that so well, of what we should do. We should minister to others and tell them about our Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? The shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus.
think we need a wake up some this morning. Hallelujah! Now, y'all gotta think this is the first service of the new year. This is how we're gonna start it. <laughs> y'all gotta get excited. The Lord is in this place, and, and we are what welcomes yeah. Him. So we yeah. have to be the ones to speak and, and welcome Him in this place. The next song we're doing, you know, we, this has become, it's one of our new ones, but this has become like a favorite, and we just wanna do it every Sunday. Um, it's Fresh Wind, and you know, the song says so many good things, but the truth of the matter is the Holy Spirit is something that we need. And if you don't have access to that in the sense of speaking in tongues, I encourage you to fight for it because it is yours. It is yours. You can claim that. And that is a way that you can pray that nothing can come against what you are praying. Nothing can fight it. Nothing can tear it down. And the Holy Spirit can be with you wherever you are. It doesn't just come through tongues, but it is something that we can access. Okay? So I want y'all to be encouraged in that too. If you don't have it, search for it. Read about it. God's Word talks about it constantly. And if you will give yourself to Him fully, you will receive it. And it's an amazing thing to have. But I wanted to read y'all two scriptures that really remind me of this song. It's Acts 2, 1 and 2. It says, in the, in the day, When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. I want that today. I want to feel the Holy Spirit. I don't want to just talk about the Holy Spirit. And our church should yearn for it. It should be something that we feel that we can't go without. And that's what the Holy Spirit is to us. It's food. It's, it's life just like the Word of God is. It just fills us to overflowing. But also in John 20, and this is when Jesus had come back to the disciples and showed himself to them after he had died upon the cross. And he says to them in verse 22, it says, and we, when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. So if, if God can come in a place and just breathe on somebody and then receive it, how much more can we receive it when we have such a body to encourage us in the Word of God and pastors? These, these disciples, they had Jesus. They didn't have every person. They didn't have churches like this. God, God talks about it in the Bible, but they didn't have a body of believers like this that we have that are totally encouraging us constantly in His Word. So I just want to encourage y'all today. Allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life, not just in this church, but in your personal life. And if you don't have tongues, I'm telling y'all, access that because God can speak to you in so many ways through that. But we're going to sing fresh wind. Spirit sound, rushing wind, fire of God, fall within, Holy Ghost, breathe on us, we pray. As we repent, turn from sin, revival embers smoldering, breath of God, fan us into. Fresh wind, the fragrance of heaven, pour your spirit out. 
I'll just sing it.
myself ways you can use me and give myself away and give myself. I kind of noticing a theme this morning that I didn't notice it when we were practicing, but you know, what if what if it's I don't know if it's for everybody in here, but I think it is. I would encourage you as we sing these songs, examine your life, see if there's desires that you've had that maybe they're just you, and that he's trying to give he's trying to get you to give those to him because he wants to give you something else that's even greater. You know, and I think one of those things is more of Him. <laughs> the greater is more of Him. And that's what I'm going for this morning. Y'all with me? Let's go for it a little bit more. We wait for you. We wait for you. Jesus. We wait for you to walk in this room. Who's waiting on me? We wait for you. We wait. We wait for you to walk in this room. Here we are, standing in your presence. Here we are, standing in your presence. She kind of glory come down. She kind of Standing in your presence, here we are. Standing in your presence, she got a glory come down. We wait for you. We wait for you. We wait for you. Standing in your presence, she kind of glow. 
Thank you that God, Lord, that was the center of what we were asking, that God, you would come and just to fill this place with your presence today. Lord, we ask for an encounter with you, Lord. We pray, Father, just as Marla shared about you, Jesus, standing in the room with your disciples and breathing on them. God, I thank you that, Lord, at, at that moment, God, those disciples became born again because your spirit came in and, and breathed life, new birth to their spirit, man. Father, we just ask you today, God, for a fresh wind of your spirit. We pray that you just infiltrate every part of our lives. And Father, we just thank you for your presence here today. We thank you that nothing is too hard for you. We claim the victory, Father God, in every situation. And we love you, Lord, for your presence today. In Jesus' name. And everybody say it. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, praise and worship musicians. Thank you. Just give the Lord a thanks for, for Lord, all He's done and brought you through last year to the beginning of a new year. Amen. Isn't God good? I just, want to, I just have to say this. Say, God, you are faithful. Amen. Just say that with me. Say, God, you are faithful. Hadn't He been faithful to us this year? Amen. Hadn't He, just, hadn't he uh, fulfilled His word? Hadn't He done what He said He would do? Amen. And thank you for being faithful to the house of the Lord. It's obvious that some cold weather has kept some people from getting out this morning. And, and we do have some that are, are sick and dealing with some uh, uh, issues. So we're going to pray for those that are sick this morning. And uh, lift up uh, uh, the voice of God in this house to, to minister to needs this morning. Mary, if you want to bring me what you have, we'll just agree in prayer for those things right now. How many of y'all know things happen when God's people pray? Amen. How many of y'all know that it's the truth? Amen. And there's power in God's Thank you, sister. Amen. So uh, let's pray for Donna Williams this morning. Uh, she is out sick. Let's pray for Catherine this morning. Uh, she is out sick. Of course, uh, continue to pray for Shawnee. We have a special prayer for her this morning. Let's pray for her. Uh, let's uh, uh, pray for different ones. I know some of uh, uh, Sandy and Al's family are still sick, going through a bunch of stuff. Uh, a lot of sickness going on, so I'm, uh, I may miss some folks, but uh, how many of y'all just uh, believe with me today that we're going to agree for the healing power of Jesus to just sweep across? Yes, amen. amen. Because by his stripes we are healed. Amen. If we accept that, receive that, then nothing from adverse health can hang around. We command it off in Jesus' name because Jesus already paid for it. Amen. Now listen, amen. The, uh, 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 there is only one situation uh, where healing doesn't work. And in that case, it works. And that is when my hour comes and my appointed time comes that I pass from this life to the next. But I'm just, I'm just fanatical enough to believe I don't even have to leave here sick. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. How many of y'all believe that Jesus intends us to live out our days and then there'll be a passing from here, here to there? Amen. And we're not all perfect and, and we go through some things. And let me tell you what, we all get hit by things sometimes because we have natural physical bodies. Amen. Amen. It's not a sign that you're in lack of faith or anything if you're having to deal with physical things. If that was the case, why in the world would Jesus pay for healing if we wouldn't go need it sometime? Amen. Amen. So don't let condemnation come in. Just realize when it comes, when attack comes on your body, you as a believer, you have a right to stand up and say, gee, I believe the word of God. And I believe Jesus has already paid for my healing. And I claim my healing in Jesus' name. And you will be healed if you stand on the word of God every time. But when your day comes, you're going to pass on. But I want to tell you, God ain't through with you yet. Would somebody say that? Say, God ain't through with me yet. 
Amen. So there is healing for us and there's power uh, of God. To, so I just want to pray, first of all, uh, for healing. Amen. This morning. You can even just stay seated when we're praying right now. But how many in this room, I know there's many of you, you've got, even if it's a small uh, thing going on, uh, uh, it's obvious I still got some cold stuff. I'm feeling pretty good this morning, but I got a few cold symptoms still hanging on. But if you've got any kind of symptoms whatsoever physically, you say, I'd like to be a part of this prayer, just lift your hand right now. Amen. Yeah, almost, almost the whole congregation. Amen. But uh, we're not ignorant of the devices of the devil. But look, y'all are in church. You didn't let it stop you, did you? Amen. So thank God. And uh, there's some that would have been here if they could have. But we're going to agree this morning in the name of Jesus for health and healing. Amen. So would you agree with me right where you sit? Just take somebody by the hand if you're sitting here. Somebody, let's agree. Father, in the name of Jesus right now. We thank you, Lord, for what you have already established and what you have already done. Jesus, you paid the price for our salvation upon Calvary, and you also paid for our healing. By your stripes, we are and were healed. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God, for it. Now, we believe your report. Hallelujah. We believe what you said, Lord. And we believe healing is ours. Just like you, you spoke, God, in old times when, when you gave the, the promised land to the children of Israel. And, Lord, some believed your report and some didn't. But, Lord, I thank you today that, God, we believe your report that we're healed. So, Lord, today in the name of Jesus, we receive your healing. Would you all just say that with me? Say, in the name of Jesus, I receive your healing. Thank you, Lord, that health resides in my body by the power of the Holy Spirit, and I rebuke sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Just say this, say, thank you, Lord. By your stripes, I am healed. Hallelujah. Now, Father, we lift up all those that are sick, God, outside of these walls today. We pray that your healing virtue would flow for them. Touch Sister Donna Williams. Touch uh, uh, Sister Shawnee. God, touch all those that are, that are sick in body today. And I feel like I'm forgetting some for sure. But, but God, just touch them in Jesus' name. And, God, you know who they are and what they're dealing with. So, Father, we thank you for healing and wholeness being released today in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, for it. We praise you for it in the name of Jesus. Everybody that agrees says amen and amen. Now, would you stand with me? We're going to pray about some other issues this morning. Amen. Uh, how many of y'all know somebody in your family or your workplace or a relationship, you maybe your neighbor, that either needs to get saved or they need to find their way back home to the Lord. Would you just let your hand and represent them right now to the Lord? Amen. God knows. Everybody say God sees. Amen. We're going to agree. Amen in prayer. You say, well, we do this every Sunday. That's right. We keep praying till we see it manifested. Amen. Don't give up. Don't give up. We keep praying until the answer comes. Amen. So we're going to pray for them this morning. How many of y'all have got a situation on your job site or your work? that you need God's intervention and, and his help. And you're doing, just, just lift your hand right now. Amen. God sees, God knows. Amen. So he's going to help you there in the name of Jesus. How I many of y'all got a situation within uh, just a uh, uh, family that you need God's uh, help, restoration, direction uh, in your family? It may not be your immediate family. It might be, but say, God needs, uh, I'm asking for God's help within my family right now. Just lift your hand. Amen. Glory to God. God knows. Amen. Put your hands down. Now, who would say there's a financial need? I want to just express to God. I know he meets all my needs according to his riches and glory. I know what his word says, and, and I want to be faithful to God. But you know, there's a financial need that I want to present to God, and I believe he's going to take care of that need. Just lift your hand right now. In the name of Jesus, God sees those hands. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God's good, isn't he? Hallelujah. If there's any other issue that we haven't mentioned, you say, I'd like to, this is on my heart. I want it to be before the Lord. Just lift it, put your hand toward the Lord. God knows what that, that need is in the name of Jesus. Well, let's take these things to the Lord. Amen. He's so good. He's so good. He loves you this morning. Just say this. Say, Jesus loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today. And we praise the Lord as we come to you. We know, God, because we've accepted you, Jesus, and what who you are and what you did for us. Lord, I thank you that because of that, we're, we're engrafted into the family of God. Thank you, Father, that, God, you wanted us as your children. And, God, thank you that, God, we have that relationship with you. And, Lord, thank you. One day we will be in your presence when there's no, we won't hurt anymore. We won't be disappointed anymore. 
God, there won't be any bad days. God, I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, one day we have that reward coming. But, Lord, we thank you that you've entrusted us to walk upon this earth, walk upon this sod that God is, and where man is, is in, in nature sinful because of our fall. And I thank you for entrusting us with your gospel and with your Holy Spirit that, Lord, you would, you would believe in us enough to, Lord, give us that call, Lord, to go out and reach the world for you. Father, we thank you for it. And God, right now we pray, God, for every situation. We exercise that word that you've given us and entrusted us with. And we pray today in the name of Jesus that for every thing that we brought to you with a lifted hand, we'll like, we thank you, Lord, that you already knew about it. But God, as we acknowledge you, you said acknowledge you in all of our ways. So we acknowledge, Lord, that we need you. Without you, we can do nothing. But Lord, with you, all things are possible. So, Lord, today, say this with me, y'all. Today, we give you every need, every care, every request. We bring it before you, and we thank you, Father God, that we know at this moment in heaven you hear our request. And we thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to perform your word. We receive by faith everything you have released for us, and we thank you for it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. And y'all, we may not have been bawling or, or, or just crying emotionally, but I want to tell you that prayer we just prayed right now, I felt the anointing of God on that prayer. I believe some things have been affected. Amen. For eternity. Amen. How many of y'all believe? Believe the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, say this with me. Say the Lord. He is good. And his mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. You may be seated. Somebody say, Praise the Lord as you're seated this morning. Well, thank you again for being in church. And uh, hey, just, just sing, sing this with me. I don't know what key you're in. Just give me a card there, Jacob. Jesus loves me. This I know. Sing with me. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They're not weak, cause he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Hallelujah. Yes. Loves me, oh the Bible tells me so. Oh Jesus, Jesus, Jesus loves me. Jesus, where we are, He loves you. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Nice to meditate on that fact sometimes. God loves you. Amen. God loves you. I, I tell you what, you know, I can't tell you everything about your life. You know, sometimes by the gifts of the Spirit, God will manifest and show things to individuals as we're praying for one another or through the body of Christ. But I guarantee you one thing. I can stand here and know without a doubt, I am a hundred percent totally right when I say this. God loves you. Amen. God loves you. Amen. Amen. Just let that sink in and say, God loves me. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just need to be reminded of that. Amen. Isn't he good? Give him one more hand of praise. Amen. Glory to God. Well, hey, we, we thank God for this day. And uh, uh, we want to, uh, you know, we don't, we don't have a, a big crowd this morning. But we do want to acknowledge those that are, that are here. Uh, we forgot to recognize the December birthdays. We're going to recognize December and January birthdays and anniversaries. And today, actually, is Grace's birthday. She's six years old today. Amen. And so if it's your, your birthday or anniversary in December, January, would you stand? And we just want to say a blessing to you. Amen. Everybody say, bless them real good, Lord. Hallelujah. Say this with me, say, may the blessings of the Lord 
reign on their house and go with them every step of the way. Say this, thank you, Lord, for another year of life, marriage, whatever you bless them with. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. God bless y'all. Give them a hand, amen. Happy birthday, happy anniversary. Uh, we're thrilled with all those things and, and the times in our life, amen. Hallelujah. I want to uh, uh, give you an opportunity to give this morning. How many of y'all think it would be a good thing to give unto the Lord? Amen. So, Usher, if y'all join me, and uh, thank you for uh, your faithfulness and giving throughout the year uh, 2020, 2021, and we are in uh, 2022, amen. How many of y'all have wrote the wrong year on your checks before? <laughs> Already. Anybody do that? Say, well, we don't use checks anymore. Well, I'm old school. Amen. Hallelujah. We give to the Lord this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, let's take whatever represents our giving in our hand. Let's speak a blessing, pray a blessing over. It. Say this with me. Say, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you again for being the provider of my life. Everything I have is because of you and came from you. Lord, I give this portion today, and I give it cheerfully, joyfully, planting it in the house of God, knowing there will be a harvest and a return. Lord, I ask you to bless it as I plant it today and bring forth a mighty harvest for this house, the kingdom of God, and my house. I give it today with great love to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on and give as the Lord will bless you to do so this morning. God bless you. Hello. God's put on her heart for you this morning. While she's coming, uh, has anybody got a testimony? Uh, you just want to stand and share and thank God for something good He has done for you. Anybody? Anybody? Go ahead, Drew. Oh, so, I've been putting in, waiting, and being trying to be patient, and patiently waiting for this job to come through. And it finally came through. Boy. And it has been... Patience is a virtue. Yeah. They say it is a virtue, which is not one of my strong suits. So, but it's, it's a good thing, and uh, so, and it's a good job. So, Praise God. Praise God. God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And uh, I think it's a more locally centered job. So no, we'll be home a lot more. Home every night. That's a blessing. Thank you, every Jesus. Night. Amen. God, everybody say, God bless him in his new job. Amen. Let's pray for blessings on Caitlin's job. She starts it in another week. So, in Jesus' name, blessings for you, Caitlin. Uh, Brother Mike, I think I saw your hand. You good? Amen. Anybody else want to give God praise? Yes, I, I saw two of you. That's your book. Wait, wait. I've been trying to do my best on my own. It's been harder on my back. I'm going to be having surgery here in the next six or eight weeks. And I've got a fellow that I've been trying to hire for about two years. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. That's a great provision. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus, for sending that help. And God's going to get you that surgery to you, Jesus. We claim that healing, Lord. And God, the hands of the surgeons be with them. Everything will go just as you planned. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody, one more time, say, thank you, Jesus. Brother Gerald, do you have something? Praise God. Yes. Well, 
Right. Uh, yeah, amen. Amen. Yeah, just to thank God for the Williams family and, and uh, uh, thank God they're just a great, great family. We have the privilege of being here and, and uh, they're going to church closer to home now. But uh, remember Craig and Haley, that, that delivery would go smooth. And, and uh, they got some people, you know, have 100 head of cows, some have uh, lots of cats. Uh, they've decided to have a herd of kids. Amen. <laughs> Praise God, amen. They, they have fulfilled that scripture, uh, you know, uh, replenish the earth, amen. But uh, we love the Williams, so remember them and, and uh, pray, say a prayer for them and for Haley coming up soon, amen. Come on, Pastor Donna, share the word. Y'all give Pastor Donna a welcome. Thank you, Pastor You know, uh, thinking this morning or last night and this morning about and praying and meditating on God's word and what God wanted me to share. And, you know, I really felt like I just need to come back to the beginning. You know, the beginning. And to me, the beginning is Romans 10, 10, 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You know, you, and then, then you go to the next, talking about believing. It says, for with the heart man believeth, what does he believeth unto? Believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, uh, you know, I just, I, I, I thank God that God's really been speaking to me about the believing. You know, when we read our word, do we believe it? Do we, we read it and we just say it, or do we really believe what we're saying? You know, uh, uh, Isaiah 53 and 5 said, He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Yeah. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. Yes. We're healed. Yes. So if we believe, if we truly believe and believe what God's Word says, then we just need to start claiming our healing. Get up every morning. If you got something going on in your life, or, or, or if it's for the job, believe it, yeah. claim it, speak it, confess it. And it's not just the words you say, but it's what in you, what's in your heart, what you believe. Yeah. Do you believe God's word? Right, man. Do right. you believe it? Do you believe that by his stripes you are healed? Do you believe it? It's all about believing. It's not how we feel. It's what we believe. Yeah. And I believe that when God took, Jesus took the stripes upon his back, he didn't do that just to do it. He did it. He paid the price. Yeah. It's paid for. It is. It's paid for. Our salvation's paid for. It is. It, it's paid that one day that we will all be in heaven together. It's paid. Amen. Just believe it. Amen. And then I want to. I want to read this uh, uh, a confession deal that I that I've been confessing. Uh, it, it's a book and it's it's really good. It says, I plant God's word deep inside my heart. No matter what obstacle I face, I believe God's word is true and gives me the victory for Lord. everything. Lord. God bless y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that's a good word right there? Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jacob. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, God's good, amen. You know, sitting back there smiling the whole time she's saying that. It's really not a surprise because me and Donna, you know, we have our, our separate prayer times, but we feed on a lot of the same things, so it's it's not a big surprise when things like this happen. But I very seldom, because uh, I want my wife to be ministered to in these services too, I very seldom ever tell her what I'm preaching. I may have given her a, a little hint, but... But she had no idea that my my message today is called believing. Amen. I believe God wants to get a point across today. Amen. And so uh, I want to tell you, believing is a, a challenge. It's also, you know, it's easy to go up to somebody and say, just believe God. Amen. It's another thing to do it. Amen. And so I believe the Lord just uh, has uh, showed me something this morning that might help us with how to believe God. Amen. How many of y'all would like to hear that this morning? Yes, so we're going we're gonna to trust and believe God. Would y'all just stand with me? And uh, we're going to believe God to move in this service this morning and uh, do what he wants to do. I want to thank you for your faithfulness to God. I want to thank you for being here today. And, and uh, you could have uh, 
you could have excused uh, your path to church today very easily, but you didn't. So I commend you for getting to the house of God. And I believe because of that, you know, uh, uh, those that seek him, find him. Amen. The Lord is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And uh, when it's when it's 70 degrees yesterday and 20-something, now we live out in the country and on my front porch, it was 12 degrees this morning. Amen. And so uh, when you when you come anyway, amen, when you come anyway, that's some diligence to that. So I commend you, amen. So thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord, and I believe there's reward coming to you for that. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for your presence in this house. I thank you, that Lord, for the, for the, uh, the knowing, God, that we have in this room that, God, there's power in your word. God, every one of us in this building know that, Jesus, you spoke it. You said that my words, they are spirit and they are life. And, Lord, every time we get together, every time we talk of your word, Lord, we experience that because there's more going on here than just what's being said. I thank you, Father, there's a voice of the Spirit of God that is moving and speaking to each one of our hearts. And, Lord, we thank you for that. Holy Spirit, Lord, I ask you, don't be silent this morning. Holy Spirit, speak to each one of our hearts and lives and let us receive exactly what we need to receive this morning from you. Lord, move in our midst. Father, do whatever you want to do this morning. Minister whatever need you want to minister to. Lord, we just thank you and we submit the rest of this service to you. And God, we open our hearts to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name. And everybody that agrees says, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. And you can turn with me to Mark chapter 9 and verse 23. I'll let you sit down. I shouldn't have. Amen. Real short. I'll let you stand up for a minute more and then sit back down because this is a real short scripture. Amen. But I just like I just like respecting the Word of God when we we read the read the main focus of our scripture. So uh, Mark nine and twenty three. Jesus talking says this: If thou canst believe, all things are possible. To him that believeth. If you have the King James, read it out loud with me. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. How many things? All things. Amen. Jesus said the believe word twice in that. If thou canst believe. If thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Lord, bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just recap the story for you and what was going on. Back up to verse 17 here and just read with me. It says, And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto you my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away, and I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. And he answereth him and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with, thee, with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. This is definitely someone possessed by the, by the, the devil. Amen. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help him. I think that's a real interesting comment right there. He said, if you can do anything, please have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father, the father of the child cried out and said in the tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. And when Jesus saw the people, Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and dead deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead in so much that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. 
And when he was coming to the house, his disciples saith unto him privately, Why could we not cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. I want to tell you that Jesus said, There is nothing that shall be impossible to us who will believe. How many of y'all know that, that uh, one of the first things that Jesus tells us is signs uh, to the believers. He says, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. Amen. How many of y'all know the devil is as much uh, in possession of, of people and, and rampant in the world today as he's ever been? Possibly more so. Amen. And, you know, we may not have, uh, 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 even if you don't see people uh, with this kind of manifestation, and it does happen sometimes. And I want to tell you, if it ever happens in here, we have the authority to deal with it. Amen? Because, and the devil may manifest himself sometimes. I think some things are kept away because there's such a spirit of God here, the enemy is not allowed to manifest himself. Amen? So I want to tell you, we're not out looking for devils, but if one dares to come in and try to disrupt, we're going to deal with him in Jesus' name. We've definitely had people influenced by the power of the enemy, strongholds broken over people, uh, demonic uh, presences broken in the name of Jesus, and we have authority over those things in Jesus' name. But I want to tell you, just as we believe for those things that seem big and spiritual and way out there, we also need to know how to believe for just the, the minute things and needs in our life. Amen? And really, we, we think it's a believing problem, but it really isn't. Amen? Jesus said, only believe. Amen? Amen? Within every one of us, let me tell you what, every one of us and everyone outside of this room today, everyone in the world is believing something. Amen? Amen? Amen. They're believing something. It's just that some are believing the truth. And some are believing a lie. Amen. 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 And our believing hinges on not if we can believe. We spend too much time wasting our time trying to benefit and build up our belief system. But let me tell you, it's not about if we have the ability to believe. It is in what we believe. Amen. Amen. And I want to just uh, show you that this morning. Amen. This man, what, what's interesting about this man here in verse 22, he wasn't really a believer yet. He just heard that Jesus was going around healing people and he was desperate. His son was vexed, possessed by the devil. He was desperate. So his comment to Jesus was, hey, this is the condition my son's in. If you can do anything, <laughs> if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So he really didn't have anything but what he'd heard to believe on, but then he got something he could believe in. Because Jesus spoke his word to him. Yeah. Amen? And when Jesus speaks his word to us, then we have something to believe in. Yeah. Amen? And Jesus said, let me read it again. If thou canst believe. See, he said, if you can do anything, please help us. But he said, if you can believe, he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe. He threw it to the man. He said, listen, if you can believe what I'm saying right now, you can have anything. Amen? Amen. And what did the man say? He said he was honest again. And he said to the Lord, and straight away the father cried out and said in tears, Lord, I believe. And then he, he looked upon his, his human limitedness and said, help thou my unbelief. Amen. Help thou my unbelief. What he didn't realize, what that man didn't realize, see, that was a pure heart to God. He was saying, Lord, I'm not there yet. I don't understand everything you are, but I believe, I believe you. I believe in what you're saying. And so that he entered into belief, but he, he's saying, but God, help me with this part that don't understand what's going on. It was a pure cry unto the Lord. And then what did Jesus do? Jesus healed his son. He rebuked the devil, commanded the devil off of him. And his son was brought back and restored to him by the power of God. Aren't you glad we have a, we have a Savior like that that has compassion on us even when we're not in the place where our belief is perfect yet? But what does Jesus always do when our faith is not perfect? He gives us his word to believe in. 
Amen. Say that with me. Say, He gives us His Word to believe in. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you, the only qualification Jesus gave this man for His miracle was just believe. Amen. Sometimes you probably said it. You probably, if you hadn't said it, you probably thought it. Man, why is it so hard to believe? You know? Preachers throw it out there. Well, just believe God. Just believe God. You know? It's all you need to do. Just believe God. Well, how do you do that? Easier said than done, or so we think, think in our mind. And some say, man, I'm, I'm trying to believe. You say, you say, and some guy says, well, I'm just trying to believe God. And you say, well, what are you believing him for? I'm just believing God. I mean, y'all think God gets a little more specific than that. Amen. Amen. I don't tell you that we're, we can be trying, but God has given us some directions of how uh, to believe. The problem is we're trying, trying to believe, but, but what the deal is is we've got to, to center in on what we're believing. Our problem is not the lack of ability to believe, y'all. It's, it's, a, it's knowing what to believe in. Would somebody say amen? See, believing has always seemed like some untangible mystery thing out there. That just some feeling we're trying to work up. But no, it's much more than that. It's putting the trust of our heart on something. And everybody is believing something. I believe God gave us a scripture to tell us how believing works. And it's found over in the Old Testament, Isaiah 53 and 1. If y'all would go there with me for a minute. Isaiah 53 and 1. Thank you, Jesus. How many of y'all want to be believers? I know you believe in Jesus. But how many of y'all want to believe God for everything he's promised you? And I do. Amen? I do. Isaiah 53 and 1. Listen to what it says here. Prophet Isaiah says it this way. Who hath believed our report? Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? How many of y'all would like the arm of the Lord to be revealed to you? Because if the arm of the Lord is revealed, it means he is stretching it forth. We quoted it. We prayed in prayer meeting this morning. We pray it all the time. There in Acts chapter 4 where they were... Uh, released from prison and, and they were, were the jail, you know, they, they came out of prison, they went to the house, the house was shaken, but what did the apostles pray? They said, Lord, that you would grant us boldness to speak your word by stretching forth thy hand to heal that signs and wonders may be done in the name of Jesus. We all want the signs and wonders to be done, don't we? And I want to tell you, God is powerful. There, he is not watered down. He's just as powerful as he's always been. Let me tell you what, this may not be a real emotional Sunday. It's kind of quiet in here, and that's okay. The, the loudness or quietness of a service does not mean, does not dictate whether God's moving or not. God's here this morning. But I'm telling you what, that, that God is here. His presence is available. He's just as power as he's ever Will you believe? That's what belief comes down to. Because let me tell you what, we can take the, the baby Christian and the mature Christian, and I can tell you what, they're still, they've got the same level of believing going on. But what are you believing in and what are you believing in? Take some sinner out of the bed this morning and drag them in here. They're going to have the same level of belief as just they will probably not be believing the same thing that one of you is believing. Because the devil will give us plenty of things to believe in. Amen. Amen? We can either believe that God will do what he said in his word, or we will believe that he will not do what he said in his word. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Yeah. In all, whether you're believing works for your good of what God wants in your life and for mine too, is what report will we believe? Amen? So determine, we've got to determine, it is the Word of God that we believe in. Today, today, my, my head tells me 
Man, it feels like you got cotton in it. Symptoms are telling me I'm sick, and in the natural, yeah, I'm not. I'm. I'm not going to confess that I'm. I'm. I'm healed in Jesus' name. But y'all know where I'm going. I've got symptoms that say there's still something going on here that's not a hundred percent. Amen. Now I can believe in that to the fact that I've got to search around and I believe I've got to find all these remedies. Or the, the bottom line is I believe that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. And if I believe that greater than I believe my symptoms, God will give me the path to that healing. Amen? I ain't got no problem with doctors. I go to them myself. I've had surgeries before. There's time when you need that, that intervention. Bottom line, Jesus has healed me every time. He gave the doctors wisdom every time. Everything they've done is because of the wisdom of God being released to man. Amen. Every medicine you take was mined out of the earth that God created. I'm telling you, all healing comes from God. And healing is just one area. What we've got to do is not believe the report of the enemy Amen. that this thing will take you to another place when God said it was going to take you here. Amen. And that goes for every area in our life. How many of y'all are going to believe the report of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Believe in, listen to this. Believing is the product or the offspring of God's word planted in the human heart. Amen. Amen. It, when we get in the word and we start believing the word, when we start taking the word as the, the true authority in our life, that's when believing will take place. And when we believe, we have the things that we stand on for God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this is where God got more specific. He said, what do we believe? We believe his report. Hallelujah. So in any given situation, I want to tell you what, what, what we need to do. We need to find out what God said about it. Amen. And God wrote in this book for us, what a gift the Bible is. He's got his word on every situation we will ever go through in life. We've just got to determine if we're going to hear it or not. And we're going to act on it. Amen? I know people that have, that have walked with God dearly, but they have decided all of a sudden that they will believe, believe another report in a certain area. Amen? And they have refused to believe the report of God. And I'm telling you, because of that, they find it hard to believe. Because when we stop believing the report of God and we start listening to man's report, it gives the enemy freedom. What does the Bible say? The enemy has blinded the minds of them who do not believe. Opens the door for them. What am I? Let me just bundle it up for you. We got to believe the word of God, y'all. Everything we go through in life, God has given us the solutions in his word. Gee, this is... The words of Jesus, this is his life before us in writing and in his spirit and his life as we've already proclaimed. And let me tell you, we've got to be in love with the word of God. We've got to know that this is the standard for our life and that everything we have in life and every answer we need is found in these words. And it's not just in printed words of principles. It is in the spirit and life of this that when we apply it to our life and ask God's presence on it and we have an intimate relationship with him, then that word becomes life and it becomes more real amen. than any other thing that's going on in our life. Would somebody say amen? amen? I want to take you to a couple of examples today about people believing in things and how it worked out for them. Go over to Genesis chapter 2 with me. Y'all probably figured we was going here. Genesis 2 Hey, it's the beginning of the year. We might as well go back to the beginning, right? Genesis 2 and verse 17. Let's look at what God said. Y'all know he, God made all the heavens and the earth, all the animals, put Adam and Eve here on the earth, and gave them uh, uh, the right to everything in the garden. I mean everything except. Everybody said except. See, God, God had to give them a choice. God had to give them a choice because if not, the love that they got back would not have been pure. It would have been just programmed. Amen? Amen. So look here in verse 17. It says, but of the tree 
Well, I'm going to do it to y'all again. Back up verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou, thou mayest freely eat. Don't cost you nothing. Amen. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. God spoke a commandment there. You can have all this, just don't touch that one. Amen. So 16, 17, God said that. Amen. Amen. Say, God said that. God said that. But now look at a further conversation over in Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said. Everybody say he said. And he said. And he said. And he said. Who said? The serpent. And he said. Yeah, you're right. He, <laughs> he said unto the woman. Yea, hath God said? Oh man, that ought to send off sirens right there. We know what God's already said. But now the enemy's saying, did he really say? Did God say? Yea, hath God said? Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, now she tried for a moment to kind of correct him. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, let me tell you what, she would not have even been looking at it if she had not believed the wrong report. Amen. Whose report will you believe? Amen. When the woman saw that the tree was good and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired, to make one wise, she's believing everything the enemy said. It doesn't say anything here about her believing that she would die when she ate it. She forgot that. Why? Because she forgot the report of the Lord. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Oh, way to go, Adam. Amen. So what did he? He believed the report of his wife when he had already heard the report of God. Man, it happened when the world began and it's still going on today, y'all. How many of y'all know whatever you're going through right now, there are two reports being given unto you and you can choose yourself still like Adam and Eve did. Which report will you believe? You're either believing what God said or you're believing what somebody or something else has said. Hallelujah. How many of y'all know that we've got to believe God and His Word? And if we do, it's going to bring life, not death. Amen. Would somebody say hallelujah? Yeah. Glory to God. Eve had to choose between two reports and she chose Satan's report. Now look, we can believe what the problem says today or we can believe what God says. How do we know what God says? He's given us His Word. And He's given us His Spirit to confirm it. Would somebody say amen? Go with me to one other story over in Numbers. A little farther over from Genesis. Go to Numbers. Chapter 13. Numbers 13. Moses had spent, sent uh, the spies out into the land to spy it out to see what they were up against. But God had, here, here's the key I want you to remember. God had already said, I give unto you the land of the Hittites and the Perizzites 
and, and all these, and, and go into the land and possess it. That was God's command. He had already said, I give you the land. Everybody say, God said, I will give you the land. Amen. So read with me in verse 27 of Numbers 13. It says, And they told him and said, We came unto the land. This is the spies talking when they get back. Whether thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit thereof. They brought a cluster of grapes back that was just humongous. And they said, it's just like God said. It's a land full of milk and honey. It, it, it proves out this is what it is. But listen to what 28 says. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities were walled. And very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. In other words, they were giants. And at the Amalek, uh, Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites. They're talking about all these surrounding uh, armies that are around. And every one of them, God had already said, I will give you their land. Amen? But they're talking about all these, these that surround it. They dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Oh, but thank God somebody stood up. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses. He said, wait a minute, guys, wait a minute. And he said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. That is somebody that is believing what God said. God already said, I give you the land. No matter what the circle, they walked into the land. Jacob, Joshua and Caleb saw it, but the report of God that said, I give you this land was the stronger voice than the voice of what they saw. But to the other spies that went into the land, all they saw is what was in the natural up against them. And they entertained the report of the enemy that said, you are not strong enough to overtake them. And because they listened to the report of the enemy, they missed out. When somebody say amen and amen. But the men, verse 31, that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. Oh, they've listened to the wrong report. And they brought up an evil report. Uh, they brought up an evil report of the land. Y'all remember what Isaiah said? Who will believe our report? But they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we had gone to search it, it is a land that eateth, eateth up with inhabitants thereof, and all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came which come at the which come at the giants, and we were in one. Own, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. They believed an evil report instead of the good report of God. And because of that, they wandered for 40 years in the wilderness. But for those who believed the good report, do you know who, when, when they passed over and took the promised land, all the generation of those men had died and their families except for two guys and their families. Guess who it was? Joshua and Caleb. Joshua led the armies. Caleb went over and fought the armies. And I love one scripture. I, I don't remember where it is right now, but where it says that, that Caleb was like in his 90s, uh, in, in years, I mean, he was way up in years, and his eyes were just as strong, and his body was just as stout as it was when he fought in his 20s. God, God kept him strong and kept him where he could receive the promises. Why? He believed the good report of God Amen. instead of believing an eval report. How many of y'all believe we ought to believe the good report of God? How many of y'all believe and know that God's, even if you're going through a financial struggle, how many of y'all believe the report of God? That if we trust in Him and do what God said, God said, I will meet all your needs according to my riches and glory by Christ Jesus. How many of y'all believe even if we're hurting in our body today, Jesus said, by my stripes you are and were healed. Hallelujah. 
Amen. How many of y'all believe that if you're confused about a situation, don't know exactly what to do, that the Word of God has given you this report. If you commit your words unto the Lord, thy thoughts will be established. Amen. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. How many of y'all know if we believe that report, we will make it through to the blessings and the promised land, so to speak, of God in every situation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whose report? Are you going to believe this morning? Will you look at one more account with me? Amen? Will y'all? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go with me. Hallelujah to Mark chapter 5. Bring up what Pastor Donna brought up. The very way we get saved. Romans 10, 9, 10. Says, Thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen? Amen. Now, I can't, I can't go out here and say, Jesus, well, would you appear to me and show me you're, you raising yourself from the dead so I can believe? No, you know what? I believe the report. And when I believe the report, my born-again spirit hit by faith with the presence of God. And I didn't have to see it to believe it. I know that I know that I know that I know inside of me what's true and what's not. As I see the news playing every day and I read the word of God, the condition of the world that it's going to be in at the time of Jesus, even though it's troubling times, something in my spirit, man, is getting excited and looking because I know, you know, I've heard people say, I wrote a song one time, said uh, in the first line was, was uh, uh, um, uh, I don't know what the first line was, but anyway, it's talking about men saying something's got to give. Something's got to give. Something is going to give. Amen. The sky's going to give way to Jesus Christ as he comes back in the clouds and calls his bride home. Would somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And those Hallelujah. that have believed his report. Amen. By faith and know that it's the truth. We're going to receive the presence of God forever and forever and forever. Mark 5. Verses 35 and 36. Now let me just recap the story for sake of time. We know there was a ruler of the synagogue named Jairus. He came and said, Master, my daughter is sick. Would you come and heal my daughter? And he said, I will. Take me to your house. They were on the way to the house. They were going through a massive crowd that was there on his way to Jairus' house. And he said, somebody touch me. And if you remember the story of the disciples of the Lord, what are you talking about? You're being thrown with people. Everybody's touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me, for I felt virtue flow out of my body. How many are thankful there's virtue of Christ flowing to heal us today? Amen. He got touched with the touch of faith by this lady. And he turned she said, it was me, Lord, it was me. And she shared the story of what she'd gone through. And Jesus said, my daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. And she left there completely whole and healed. In the meantime, as they had stopped on the path, and Jesus, the virtue of, of the Lord, had flowed through to heal this woman, the servants came from Jairus' house and gave this report. This report. Everybody say, this report. It says here in Mark chapter 5, verse 35 and 36, While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house Certain which said, here comes the report, thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, Jesus heard the report too. Amen? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid only believe. Amen? Be not afraid. Only believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John and the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and seeth the tumult and them that wept and wailed greatly. And he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make you this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. 
I'm going to tell you something about Jesus here in a minute. And they laughed him to scorn, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and took them uh, that were with him and entered where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of 12 years. And they were astonished with great astonishment. Hallelujah. She was dead, but Jesus healed her anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But listen, listen to the critical things that happen in these few verses, verses 35 and 36. First of all, the, Jesus had, was going to, to the house to heal. He had, Jairus had heard the reports of Jesus and believed in his power to heal. He was believing the report. But on the way of the path of the Lord, they got interrupted. Amen? Got interrupted. And while they got interrupted, the word came. The evil report came. Is your daughter's already dead. It's too late. Don't bother the master anymore. How many of y'all have ever had the devil come and tell you, don't even try anymore. It's too late. It won't work out. Amen? Amen? We had the report. Sister Edna gave us a report about a young lady who came here at one time. She hasn't come. Well, we did ever here here a while back for one time, but 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 uh, uh, she was she had given her heart to the Lord many years ago, but got away away from the Lord. Was uh, was uh, involved in drugs and, and uh, addiction, alcohol addiction, and to a great extent, uh, she did get free from that. But the enemy still plagued her in her mind with the report that she was going to die and go to hell. And we just got the report that this week that, that she heard the word of God. She got free from that. She broke free from that and is, is ready to live for God now. And we're thankful. And it all, it all comes down to this. She decided to believe the report of the Lord instead of the report of the enemy. Amen. Praise God for that. Jay Iris had to make a decision. And when, I'm sure when, when he came, when he, the servants from his house came, Said, don't trouble the master, your daughter's dead. Can you imagine all the natural thoughts that would have rushed through his head? Oh man, we had to maybe if we hadn't stopped for this lady. Amen. Maybe we had to stop. It would have been in time. Now, now it's too. But but Jesus, as soon as Jesus heard it, he nipped it like a forty-five. He nipped it in the bud. You know, he and he said he said Jairus. He took up control of what he, what his thinking was, and he said he said. He said, uh, 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 be not afraid, only believe. What was Jesus saying? Don't believe that report, believe my report. Don't be afraid, believe. At that moment in time, Jairus had to make a decision to believe that report or believe the Lord's report. Now here's the, where the grace of God the power of God. Now, I want y'all to realize something here. God, God really showed me this in this story. Are y'all still with me here? Amen. Lining this down here. Stick with me just a minute here. Do you realize Jesus had to exercise the same thing I'm preaching to you this morning? Because y'all y'all got to remember, Jesus was fully God, but he was fully man too. Amen. That's why Jesus had to, had to persevere in the garden to crucify that, that will of, of the flesh in him that was fully man so that he could would be willing to go give the ultimate sacrifice. The Bible tells us that he was tempted in all ways that are common to man. And I want to tell you, when that report came, do you you mean to tell me you don't think Jesus in his, his fleshly part, in his in his natural part of man, did not for a second that hit, but then immediately he knew what to do with it. Because Jesus himself believed. The report of the Father. And he spoke that to Jairus. And when he spoke it, then Jairus had the opportunity to believe also. Jesus believed. And what did Jesus, what report did Jesus believe? Well, we know this. We know that the Bible says that, that Jesus said, I only do what I see the Father do. He had already seen the power of the Father being released on Jairus' daughter. He'd already seen that in the Spirit. He knew it was going to take place. So he wasn't going to let this natural report stop that. But I want to tell you what Jesus also remembered. What report Jesus also remembered. He remembered the report back when he came out of the water. And the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. 
He remembered the voice of the Father when he was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter, James, and John were there. And he was transfigured before him. And a voice came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus had to make the decision as well to believe the report of the Father. Amen. And so when he told Jairus, Jairus believed him and followed him. And God did the miracle. Now here's the neat thing about God. Even though they got interrupted, God gave them an example of his healing power with that woman with the issue of blood to build, to build Jairus' faith right there in the midst of being slowed down to get to the provision of his life. Isn't God so good that even when it seems like the answer is being delayed, and even when we get the report that it may be too late, that God is sending us his miracle work and power all around us for us to believe the report of the power Amen. of the master. I'm here to tell you today that God has given us the land of blessing. God has given us the land of promise. And we are well able to go there and take it. I'm telling you that God has promised us healing. God has promised us the salvation of our families. God has promised us many things in the word. And I ask you today, whose report will you believe? The enemy will show up in every instance and say, have God said? i tell you what our answer needs to be. Yes, he did. He absolutely did. I've got it in writing here. And I've got it in writing here. Amen. He writes his principles on the table of our hearts. Amen. Amen. And we, when we transform what is here to here by faith in the report of Jesus, then the enemy cannot steal it away. And when he comes and says, Have God said, we will resoundingly say, Oh yes, he has said. And it is ours. Amen. The Hebrews eventually got the land the ones that had faith and believed the report of God, they enjoyed it just like they had stepped into it the first day. But for those who believe the evil report, they missed out on the land that flows with milk and honey. How many of y'all are with me? And you say, I ain't going to miss out on nothing that God has for me on this side. Amen. Plus heaven. Amen. Amen. I will believe. The report of the, how do I believe? I believe God's word. Amen. I'm believing in something. I'm going to believe God's word is true. If you agree with that, stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you appreciate the word of God this morning? Yes. Give the Lord a hand of praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He will always display his power. He's putting it around us all the time. God will always speak his love to us. And God will always give us. See, man, aren't you glad we live in a time and a day that we have the word of God. See, that what we have, what we, get, what we get to read and to preach all the time, is that's our witness. That, that's, that's our experience of that lady being healed before our need gets met. See, the, the, the disciples, all they had was the old, old law. Amen. All they had, they didn't have no New Testament. They were the ones that penned it. Amen. So all they had was the Old Testament. And then they, by the spirits revealing to them through the ministry of Jesus and what Jesus shared to them, the word of God in print came to us that we have this whole Bible that we see the plan of God up to, up to Jesus and, and the cross and the resurrection until the church age and what we're living in now. And all oh, the help, man, this is like, this is like examples of God's power over. And this book is not a lie, y'all. It is the truth. It's a history lesson, but it's also a presence and power experience because Jesus is still alive today and sits at the right hand of the Father. Amen. Aren't you glad this morning? Let me pray for you. Father, thank you today. Thank you, God, for the power of your word. And I thank you, Lord, for showing us that God, it's, God, it's not, we don't need to stress out about whether we believe or not enough. 
God, it's not if we believe enough. It's what we're believing in. Let us direct our belief to the Word of God. God, when we get the Word of God in our hearts and we feed on Your Word so regularly that it becomes a part of us, it will take residence in our heart and there will be offspring from it. When situations come, we will believe Your report first. So Lord, I thank You for that. I pray for every situation that has come with an evil report in anyone's life this morning. We resist that report. We say to the enemy, yes, God has said. He has said we are healed. He has said we are provided for. He has said our families are healed. He has said that we are going forth with victory. He has said he's going to lead us and give us the victory in the battle. And God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've said. And we believe your report this morning. And we will not believe an evil report. Thank you, Father, for what you've given us today. And thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to believe your word. And I just pray this morning, Father God, that, Lord, you'd cause us all in this year, 2022, to fall in love even in a greater way with your word, with your report. Because it is that, that when we believe your report, like Isaiah said, oh, Lord, your hand, your arm is extended to us. And Lord, we want to see the result of your arm extended. We give you praise today, and we give you thanks, and we give you praise for all that you've done and all that you're going to do in Jesus' name. I want you to just say, hey, man, if, if, if you've got something, you say, you know what, today, Pastor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe the report of the Lord on a certain situation in my life. And I needed to hear this today. I will not believe the report of the enemy. I'm going to go with God's report. Just lift your hand right now. Hallelujah. God, you see those hands? Thank you, God, for it. Lord, let it be sealed in heaven. And God, help us to follow through now in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen and amen and amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise. <laughs> amen. Glory to God. Now, I just want you to just sit down for just a second. I'm about to release you. I uh, just want to share something with you. And for those of you who are in prayer meeting, you already heard this. And, and, uh, but uh, we are going to do something, and, and, uh, which we've done for the uh, last uh, year or two, I think. But uh, and it may be just a regular thing that we do. I, I want to challenge you as a pastor, for any of you that be willing to do this uh, with us, that we're going to do a fast again this year, uh, starting next Sunday uh, at lunchtime. We're going to start a fast. We're going to do a 21-day fast. And I'm asking you, what does what fasting do? It puts us in a place to hear from God. As we sacrifice something of the flesh, and, and we just, uh, as I shared with the, the prayer meeting folks this morning, you know, it's just good practice to tell the flesh no sometime. Amen? And to put yourself in a position to hear the Word of God. There's great and mighty things. We even read in the Word today, did we not, where that, that demon-possessed uh, guy the disciples couldn't cast him out. They said, Jesus, why could we not cast him out? We believed. He said, he said well, this kind only comes by prayer and fasting. There is power released through prayer and fasting. And how many of y'all want to have all the power that God has available? So there is, there is power. Now, as I shared this morning also with them, it's not just fasting. It's not just doing away with, with the food. If you do that, it's just dieting. Amen? But it's prayer and fasting. Replace that with prayer, amen, and seek the Lord. And, and if we do, I believe, man, God has moved greatly uh, in our services and through these, these times of, of uh, fasting. So I want to just uh, challenge you and ask you to join uh, me on, on this fast. And we're going to start it uh, next Sunday at lunchtime. And, and you can do it in any variety you want. Now, some may fast uh, one meal a day. Uh, there may be certain foods you fast. That's probably what I'm going to do. And uh, uh, so uh, just be creative with what God has. And I would challenge you to do a food or uh, an intake item. We can fast other things sometime, but uh, the Old Testament way of fasting was always food. And so, so I want you to uh, challenge you to do that and uh, uh, submit that, sacrifice that to the Lord and give that time to the Lord. And I believe God will move. Amen. And fasting is still a powerful thing, fasting and prayer for the day. How many of y'all believe that? And so I, I throw that out to you if you'd like to be a part of that. We appreciate that. And uh, uh, come prepared to step into that uh, next Sunday. I guess you can eat your real good breakfast next Sunday morning before you come. <laughs> but uh, but uh, do that, and we're going to fast and pray for 21 days. And then we'll come together on that last Sunday in January.
key of the year to set the tone for the whole year. I believe God will establish our thoughts as a church, as a people of God, for your family, for individuals. So I believe there's things God wants to release to us, and there's things that we'll open the door to hear from God for. So how many of y'all think that's a good idea? We'll seek the Lord on that this week and just be obedient whatever God would have you to do. With that, God bless you. Stand and I'll just say one more prayer to dismiss you. Thank you all for being uh, faithful to the Lord and being in his house today. Father, thank you for your people. Thank you for the family of God. Thank you for all that you've done today. And thank you for God just uh, uh, speaking to us, no doubt, God, uh, what you wanted us to hear today. That it's time to believe. How do we believe by your word? So God, help us to to, Lord, believe your report in every situation and to go forth in the victory. Now, Lord, bless and keep your people, protect them, heal them, watch over them, keep them covered. And, Lord, we thank you, Father God, for the victorious week that's before us. Bring us back together on Wednesday and Sunday in a victorious way. We thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Say this, I leave the house of God, empowered by the word, anointed by the Holy Ghost, and covered.